Lena. Lena has recently visited Qatar, which was one of the number of places where Orwell was stationed during his time uh, in Bath. And we're going to hear about it. Thank you. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you for having me here in this meeting. It's really great honor. And uh, first, I would like to explain that, yes, my name is Mina Craig, but it has got nothing to do with Bernard Craig, Craig and Bernard Lee, as well as no connection with Francis Craig as well, or Michael Craig. Um, the George Orwell connection. Um, in myself, uh, I was working at the BBC uh, Indonesian Radio Indonesian section from 2003 to 2006, and uh, it was on the fourth floor. And then there's a huge, uh, there was a huge panel in Bush House of a picture of George Orwell with the BBC um, mic on it. Yes, that white, black and white in the wall next to King Jordan. So every day I was working and just seeing that. Um, but at that time, I, was, I didn't have much of interest. Um, second one is, uh, this came through my husband's uh, family. So his great-grandfather, great, uh, Bernard Holden, was a uh, deputy commissioner in Qatar in, um, I think, 1886 to 1905. And he left Burma in 1912. Uh, and then uh, I think about 10 years later, in 1922, um, um, every player was posted in there. And uh, the similarity to, within these two gentlemen is that um, after retired, Bernard Horton was also very, um, uh, what do you call it, very anti-colonial government. Um, he's retired, but he was writing a lot about how to uh, do administration in Burma and in India, and um, he's uh, yeah writing a lot and campaigning about the separation of uh, Burma from the India uh, colonial rule. So I'll start with this first. Um, um, yeah, uh, maybe I should just start with the um, Myanmar current situation. My husband, um, Thomas Green, he, is, uh, he meant to be here today, but uh, he couldn't. He's working within the UN, and um, right now he's being posted in, in Yangon, in Rangon. And um, yes, mainly covering the conflict in, in uh, Rakhine. There are 21 rebel groups in the country, and uh, 10 of, only, only 10 had signed the ceasefire cis agreement. So everywhere, in, not just in that part, but also in the north, in the, also the border with Thailand, this conflict is still now still going on. And in Rakhine, the conflict is not only just about um, the Muslim, uh, no, the Buddhist uh, military government towards the Buddhist, but also it is uh, about the majority Burma ethnic group towards uh, sort of Bengal, Bengali ethnic group. And then um, in our trip, like, uh, we did the trip last December with, uh, as a family and with my two children. And um, we talked to ordinary people, like with taxi driver and, and people in the shop and things like that. They uh, flatly refused that there is problem in that um, area. They were saying, oh no, that's a terrorist attacking our villages and our military doing what they can to protect. So uh, the conflict in the north, it is um, ethnic minority Christian. Um, and since long ago, that um, north part of um, Myanmar is very important, including during British colonial time as well, because it is rich in oil. And, Gold, also jewelry, and also opium. In that, um, during the British era, opium trade with the China was very important. Okay. But apart from that, I think you should visit because, um, yeah, 
you know, people are generally very polite, and it's a very safe country. We've been traveling all over the world, um, partly because of my husband's work as well. And uh, that's the only country that we feel we can leave our stuff in the hotel. We can leave our bags in, uh, in the car that we hired without any worry of like someone will take it. No. And then also walking around everywhere in Myanmar, we find that people do not really hustle you much like when you go to other tourist uh, destination. Um, okay, and then also is it because right now it is an exciting point of time to see the change in that country. Um, yes, kind of democracy is started to become open in there, but people are still referring themselves as living within the uh, 1984 uh, system of governance. So um, I mentioned to you earlier that um, Orwell is really, really being referred to in there. And journalists that I met, uh, cartoonists, um, they are continuously using reference from there, from the book, into um, their critic or, or indirect critic towards their, their own government. Um, and yeah, um, this is um, where the map of the country we <coughs> flew into um, Yangon, which is we are close to the beach here, and then up to Mandalay, flying there, and then from Mandalay up to Kata, we hired a car because there are other ways of getting up there um, by ferry. Um, so there. <laughs> Very along um, in the river, up to, from here to from here to Kata. But um, there's choices. The first one is the the cruise ship. Um, oops. Yeah, uh, the very convenient ones with the cruise ship. But the uh, uh, there's local ferries. They take very very long, and. Um, that time was um, dry season, so the river is sort of like a bit dry up, and then the, the trip tend to be a bit slow. Okay, those are the information that we got. And um, there is train from Mandalay to Naba, which is not far from Kata, and then from Naba, you have to get a, a bus or hire the car into Kata. But uh, the train as well as the railway are from 1920s, so it's really, I would say, really, really difficult. And then I've seen this um, uh, program on Netflix, and then I could see it's it's horrible. <coughs> and there are public buses and minibuses, of course. Um, but, um, yeah, and that's the example of the local um, ferries, and that was the. And this is the example of how railways are like that. In some part, even quite interesting, the part that we passed through um, car journey, the, um, what do you call this, the, the sleepers, sometimes it twisting like that. So me and my husband sort of like, oh, that can be quite interesting when you're trained actually on it. <laughs> so quite dangerous. And then uh, I'd like to talk a bit about uh, the heritage trust in there. We met the team, and then uh, it consists of a group of local artists. One of them is called uh, Nyoko Nai, who's a graphic designer. And this is the person who I've been in contact to from, I think, uh, 2013, when I started to uh, research on very important <coughs> as part of the family archive. Um, yes, he started to be interested in those things when he saw that lots of uh, tourists, mainly people who are very interested in uh, Jojo, came in the city and then sort of trying to trace 
this uh, Orwell um, sort of connection with, with the city. And he also met uh, Emma Larkin, of course, the uh, writer of um, In the Footstep of um, George Orwell in Burma. And um, in 2013, the house of uh, deputy commissioners about to be demolished into, because they are all in the city center. And it's uh, in terms of value, it is really good uh, value for the land. And the local government wanted to either sold those buildings into private investors or demolish it com completely and to get the ground, which is happening right now with uh, the British Club. Um, so far they have um, been able to rescue uh, the DC house and also um, supposedly Orwell house. We are not sure whether he was actually <coughs> staying in there because it's quite, uh, I'll show you in the picture later. Um, it's a kind of the grant and it was, I think it's the police um, commissioner or something like that. Um, so here is the, um, you could see the, the thing that they have achieved and then they, they are really uh, keen on trying to preserve the whole town to become uh, based on the theme of Burmese days because um, they could see that after Burma is um, open up to the world um, tourists coming in and, but mainly into Yangon um, and uh, Bagan, Mandalay and they would like to draw them up more into the north right now the one uh, the people who are coming there is just people who are really interested in, in Jojo Well or the Second World War, because um, in the Second World War, Qatar was also the center for um, sending the British troops to sort of attack Japanese supply. It, it's called um, Chindit Operation, and uh, I think it's White City or something like that. So, and some work has been done uh, related to the Second World War uh, project. Um, there is also other things to do around there, which is uh, visiting local artisan and um, there is also <coughs> elephant camps where the old elephant that used to be used for working in the logging company now being um, sort of uh, put into circuit there. And uh, they are really heavily rely on uh, voluntary donation. That is the some people within the team of the Heritage uh, Trust, and that is the, the chairman. This is um, George Orwell House. Right now, partly restored. Currently, it is still being used as police uh, headquarters or headquarters in there, and uh, but it is already being given to the trust to be um, preserved and they plan to build a museum, although I have to say they don't have much to put as in it as a museum. So, um, yeah, I've been trying to talk to them to, to use it as like a center of learning or, I don't know, um, art and journalism or things like that, instead of uh, using it as a display museum. But it's um, still ongoing talk. That's the inside. Currently, it's in this here, the middle hall there. It is being used for meeting for the uh, police in there. And this billboard had been put uh, just recently in front of uh, Orwell House. Um, yeah, although so I think some of the date and um, year is not quite correct, but I've given the book on. Um, George Orwell's uh, life, uh, your book actually, David, to, to them for reference so that they can sort of uh, amend it. And this is a produced <coughs> booklet for the local tourism. Because, um, yeah, I talked to them, to the team, and then they were saying it is so sad that um, visitors coming from all over the world to this city because they are well educated, they are know a lot more and then our own people in the city 
and know very little about ourselves. So um, they also part of why they're making this is also for the local young people in that city to understand uh, the importance of their own city. And this is the um, the house that um, so it uh, in uh, come up in our uh, family archive. We have all photos of in the front as well as the interior of the house. When um, Nyoko started to do the report uh, about it in the newspaper, it came up in Paris newspaper. And then I, um, it just happened that I was doing research on Bernard Horton, and then the picture of this house coming out and by saying that it was George Orwell house. And then I thought, I don't think it is because it is um, a deputy commissioner house according to our archive. And that's how um, also um, led into me contacting the society and saying that this is um, going on in Cap. As the inside right now, um, they have got some sort of map of the Second World War photos and uh, they start also the digging in um, the Japanese cave around the, city, uh, the area and then they found stuff from the Second World War and they're planning to, to put it in here as a um, museum. And we continue to supply sort of things that we got at home <coughs> and um, <coughs> making a copy of those um, stuff given it to them. So, but the other thing that um, <coughs> kind of small mission that uh, we did because um, uh, I could see that quite often uh, he's being referred as this is the DC uh, uh, the commissioner character within the Burmese day and I said well it's different different character. Um, this is uh, a little bit about Bernard Horton. So he has a um, sort of career of about 23 years um, range of, from as, uh, assistant commissioner to become a uh, commissioner. And um, there is a school in Mulumain which is um, still standing up to now, still running. And there was a library, but right now, we don't know where exactly is that library um, or what becomes of that library. And then, uh, like I mentioned before, after the diet, he's supporting um, the independence of Burma from India. So basically, if you do a research on Google uh, search, you will find a lot of presents to him. Um, he lived in, after from um, Burma, he lived in Devon and um, the house has got a tower on top and it is by the beach and it is known about me that there is a tunnel from the house into the beach and the other side of that uh, Devon is obviously island. So those days when he was uh, active in politics, um, it is quite easy to sort of like making an issue that uh, oh, he was um, a spy for Sinn Féin. Um, although the, this, the other reason he goes through, he went to Dublin quite a lot is because his wife was from Dublin and uh, has family in there. Okay, um, he died in 1933 in Oxford and then uh, here you can find the reference about him a lot more on that website, written by a um, historian of his <coughs> colonial history um, in, um, from a professor from Leeds called Jonathan Sarah. That is the British club, um, the insides. Right now it is being, still being used as a sort of cooperative, uh, um, I think, farmer traffic. And uh, they have the plan to build a garden in front, which is right now is in terrible condition like that. Um, and then also at the back, is actually a river um, that goes into Irrawaddy, but it's um, right now it's drying up. And that is the hotel room stage um, with um, a, restaurant, a restaurant named after 
the book in what was that called? I can't say. Kyoktada? Choktada or something? Yeah. Uh, yes. Choktada or something like that. And the rooms were named after a characters in the book. And then the library, full of book, uh, copies of um, anything related with either Burma history or um, George Orwell. So if any of you thinking about visiting, do bring a copy of anything that you've got. They'll be more than happy to have it. And um, the leftover of um, Second World War, you could see it everywhere in the town. This is, as you can see, it's the landing strip for um, play uh, being used as, um, what do you call it, a fence in the hotel as well. Um, this is a set of statue of Aung San, General Aung San, which is the father of Aung San Suu Kyi. Um, recently, there is an um, order from the central government to build one in eight major cities and to name bridges after him. For uh, places that is mainly, majority Parma and Nick, it is no problem. But for the places where ethnic groups are living, as uh, main population is non-Parma and non-Buddhist, is um, he is not seen as a national hero because he was after the independence given by the British to Myanmar to Burma. It was mainly the Burma uh, majority led by him and ruling the country. So the, the what do you call it, the uh, local, especially in the north and in the borders, they're not really sort of openly accepting the idea. And currently there's a, quite a lot of um, incidents, protests as well as the um, riot going on because they don't want to accept this idea. We were actually sort of considering to fly into Bamo, which is closer to Kata, and uh, it was quite interesting. They, the people in here, uh, in Kata, who I contacted to, he didn't really want to say clearly that there has been a problem, because I guess they don't want to scare, up, uh, scare them, uh, us uh, not to come. Um, he keeps saying, please take a car from Mandalay to Kata. But I looked into sort of doing the Maurice it's like, oh gosh, eight hours uh, with two children in the car for the full day. Will we sort of be able to do it? So I keep contacting different people, as well as the uh, my husband trying to ask information from the UN staff as well in those area. And then it, it, eventually we got the actual answer saying that there has been a sort of explosion some sort um, on one of the roads because of this process. <coughs> People do not want to have a uh, statue of General Aung San there. Because I just a little bit of um, um, features in there. And there's an, a lake as well that you can visit in there. Unfortunately, you can't swim in it because people are um, mining the gold with mercury and the water goes into the water. In, in the lake, in that uh, Japanese hospital, which is quite interesting because it is underground. So when they left um, after the uh, the war ended, they tried to bury it and close the entrance so that the British couldn't or anyone else could use it. Um, the digging process is still in the process, the, uh, ongoing, and then they found a lot of stuff and. Uh, the local government seems to sort of fund it because they now see that yes, we can build a revenue from attracting uh, tourists to come here alone. Yeah. And those are the um, library in the uh, <coughs> hotel, which is uh, quite interesting because um, the other thing that uh, very <coughs> notable in there, the older generation is <coughs> really good in this. Uh, the younger one is struggling because the quality of education is not great. Yeah. Thank okay. you, Paul. I'm so sorry, it's sort of like rumbling. But <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> start.